In the previous example, we took a single variable and made a new variable that had more coarse groupings. Other times, we actually want to take multiple variables in our data set and integrate them some way into a new composite variable. Two common examples when we do this with marketing survey data. Often we want to count up things. So in our survey here, we asked people a list of breweries that they might be familiar with. We might want to make a column that says, in total, how many, so a count, of breweries are they familiar with. Other times we want to average things. Sometimes we ask multiple different survey questions that are all really trying to tap the same underlying idea. This is common for things like trust, brand loyalty, customer satisfaction. When we intend to analyze that data, we don't want to analyze each question separately. Instead, maybe our game plan is to actually average them all together into a single unified score and then re report and analyze on that. So in our example here, it'd be kind of simple. We have two survey questions that are measuring subjective knowledge about craft beer. So both use a Likert scale. One is, I know quite a bit about craft beer. And the other one is, among my circle of friends, I'd be considered to be one of the more knowledgeable about craft beer. Notice how these are both about someone's self-perception of how much they know about craft beer, but they tap into slightly different ideas. It might make sense for us to average their score together here to get to an integrated subjective knowledge score. Now this one's going to be pretty easy for us to pull off. Across each row in our data set, we're going to use a simple average function. In other words, it'll just average those two values together. This would be a little more common when we had three or more, but it works the same for averaging two things. It should be noted, uh, in this example, we didn't have any values we wanted to exclude. So these particular questions, there wasn't an I don't know or does not answer style negative 999 or negative 9 response. So we didn't have to worry about excluding some, ans uh, some answers to surveys questions. If we wanted to do that, we could have used an average if function. I don't cover that in this video, but it works just the same as all the other if functions that we've shown previously, and it's easy to check up on with a simple Google. So I'm, on that. so I'm in my data file again, and in this example, I want to take the average of the two subjective knowledge questions. So that's column O and N. So I'll insert a new column here for my subjective knowledge merge or average or whatever I call it, right? So I have to give it a new name. And simply just take the average function here. And since they're right next to each other, we can just select them together. We could use commas if they're located in different places. And away we go. And it looks like it's not working correctly, but again, that's just an issue of decimal precision. For example, here, now that we've put one decimal point out, we can see that a three and a two has an average of 2.5. And since there is a continuous set of values down the rows here. We don't have to drag this. We can just double click it. Works great. And as I've mentioned before, it's usually good practice when you sort of stretch your uh, set of functions. You're really worried that you might not have gotten it right. A really good tool is to always check the very end, wherever you drag the function to, click up into the formula bar and verify that it's referring to the correct cells. If that one's referring to the correct cells, it's almost certain that all the other ones are working correctly, right? And that's it.